How's it going, guys? Coming at you with another one today here, iRhythm Technologies, ticker symbol IRTC listed here on the NASDAQ. Now, this company, as we see, went from about, you know, sub-$100, $80 level here, $90, and absolutely exploded. You guessed it, post-pandemic, post-stimulus checks, stock went all the way up to almost $300 a share. Now, I do know that revenues were growing during the time, but of course, just like every other chart we look at, if they brought it up to $300 and everyone and their brother bought some shares, then it wouldn't have immediately cratered down to $41, which is what we're seeing here. Now, of course, it bounced somehow and rallied um, 350% up to $170 and has since been bouncing around, touched below $100 at one point, and is now sitting here at $130.95, up almost five points here on the day, three and three quarter percent for the day. Let's see what's going on. So as we see, we close near the top of the day range. We are near the top half of the 52 week range here. But this company, now listen, this company, great story, bringing in good revenue. Look at this annual growth here, 150 million, we'll call it up to 200, 265, 322 million, 400 million, right? So year over year, the company is, has been doing well. The one thing you will notice though, in, interestingly enough, is Usually here in 2020, we see all companies take a dip, if you recall. This company kept on growing, but somehow now bringing in more revenue from the worst year in recent history, they are now losing more money per dollar that they make, which again, kind of throws me for a loop. Now, I'm sure, you know, it's all to increase productivity and efficiency and reinvestments and all that stuff. You know, I'm, I'm sure it all sounds good, but that always makes me laugh. You know, how you how you can bring profit margins. Look at the way those profit margins are just beelining up with the revenue, right? So, so if it kept this trajectory, you would think like towards the second half of 21 or potentially by the 22, this company may be even close to net income positive here, going from minus 34% to only minus 16%. Uh, however, of course, again, they're sitting here at basically around minus 30% profit margin, but the revenue is growing. So we do see that the company is increasing their revenue, their clientele, whoever they're selling these devices to. Uh, however, they are still significantly bleeding. You come down here, strong price target north of $152, about 16% move from here. But basically, a little synopsis here on the company. It's a digital healthcare company which engages in the design, development, and commercialization of device-based technology to provide ambulatory cardiac monitoring services. This is like portable, like wearable devices, like EKG monitors and whatnot. It also provides solutions that detect, predict, and prevent disease. Not exactly sure how it does that, but the company was founded. Uh, September 06, headquartered in California, of course, of all places. And incidentally, here, if we go back here, I believe this big drop, oh no, maybe it was... March, it was March, maybe like right around this time, was uh, when that Silicon Valley stuff came out, I think. I don't know, I can't remember. But anyway, long story short, uh, the company been beating basically for the most part on the revenue side as we see here this is the most recent quarter this was posted um, about 11 days ago and you can see the company significantly missed on the eps side however came in over four million above analyst ex expectations uh, of course the the quarter prior they actually did a little bit more in revenue about a million million and a half more so you know again i don't want to say the company has potentially plateaued because they really do seem to be increasing that revenue, look at that, you know, 90, 80, now, you know, 85, but, you know, if you keep backing it up, you know, low 80s, now you're into the 70s, and then look, estimates of only 62, they come in with 72, look at that, up from 50, right, so if we continue to, to back this up, you can see 40, 30, right, so the company started out just making these low tens of millions, and now we're in the low hundreds of millions, so obviously they're heading in the right direction, and it should technically be a buy, right? Well, not exactly, in my opinion, because I do feel that, obviously, just like a lot of these other companies in, in the tech sector here that people love to talk about and you guys love to trade and, and just get hyped about, listen, I get it. You know, it sounds like a great story, wearable devices, you know, tracking heart monitors and whatnot. That sounds phenomenal. The problem is the stock should come down about 50% from where it's trading right now, right? Now, this is interesting because they started to run this up and you can see this was in like... 
I don't know, maybe like 27, 30, and they ran it up to basically about $100 a share right here at 98. And then you can see they just slowly started to peter it out and like sell it off, which means that if this pandemic explosion did not happen, see how it immediately came back here into here? It basically means that this company probably would have stayed in this tight little channel over the course of, uh, you know, the last uh, three years or whatever this is. So this explosion kind of threw us for a loop here with a company like this, uh, because, again, even though revenue has been increasing, it was probably still overvalued here at 80 and 90, which is why they had it on a slow, steady sell off. Right. So, if again, if this didn't happen, we'd be like down here, possibly. And, and look at the right side of your screen. Fifty seven dollars. You know, we even here towards the top of the range here. Eighty five dollars. Right. You're, you're talking about a 40 percent sell off from the levels we're currently at here. So that's why, uh, you know, the company bringing in what, 100 million, bringing in over 400 million dollars for the year. Yeah, that's all well and good. But you have a market cap of four billion dollars. Right. So they're trading like 10 times yearly revenue when they're bleeding more than they were several years ago. Now, again, I understand that revenue is increasing, but of course, it's not outpacing. Um, it, 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 it's 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 outpacing the ratio here is, is what I'm trying to say. I know I know sometimes I say things a little weird, but just just stick with me here. So they're trading again like nine and a half, ten times total revenue. And unless you own the stock, you really can't justify it to me. Notice how anytime someone owns a company, they want to debate with you and argue with you and try to tell you the stock's going from here, $131, oh, it should be $231, right? But also at the same time, when you tell them, well, it's trading 10 times yearly revenue, it's probably due for a sell-off, right? People don't want to accept that. But also at the same time, we have looked at so many other companies that, of course, are more healthy financially in the numbers than this company right here. And they're not trading nine, nine and a half, ten times yearly revenue. Most of them are trading between like two and three, maybe four, right? So if you look at it like that, you can say, yeah, you know, it's, it's understandable for this company to sell off. But, you know, I wanted to go over the numbers here. As we can see, missed on the last two quarters on the EPS side. They were doing well before that. And, um, Again, even switching over here to the quarters, we can see slight growth here, 102, about 104 million. Again, 112 just posted 111. But for some reason, the profit margin is significantly struggling here in the last year or two. And again, I understand that everyone is sold on the hype. However, it, it, just, it just may go down before it goes up here. If we switch over here to the forecast on the revenue, motorcycle going by, you can see that this company, look at this, estimates of only a loss of $3.40 a share. The company came in losing $3.88 a share. <clears throat> and then, of course, moving forward, you can see for this year, to, uh, 2023, estimates of minus 309. Look at this, 208, 110, basically break even. 2026, basically break even. Right. So somehow revenue, again, that has really been increasing very nicely. You know, look at this hundred, hundred and a half, two hundred million, two and a half, three hundred million, four hundred million. Right. Look at this. Almost five hundred million, six hundred million estimates of almost seven hundred million. Twenty twenty six estimates of over eight hundred million. So the revenue brought in has to double from this current point. Not the starting point, right? The starting point was $60 million. So from the get-go, the company was overvalued, in my opinion, which, of course, as I reiterate constantly on this channel, all of these newer age tech companies are. You guys are better off waiting for the explosion, waiting for the implosion, and then reanalyzing the numbers and trying to step in near lows. I'm telling you, you're better off. I know it might suck in the short term, maybe even a year or two, maybe even in the long term, the shorter long term, if you will. And I understand, you know, that you had something, a massive rally like during the pandemic. But again, as we're seeing here, it shouldn't have gone up that high. So again, like I always say, younger people who got this stimulus money, they basically stepped into the market. They bought Tesla. They bought um, meme stocks. They bought all of these technology stocks. Every single healthcare stock basically went up during COVID because everyone thought that any company in the sector was going to benefit from COVID. Right. You had no name companies doing no revenue go from like two dollars to like, you know, twenty nine dollars a share or whatever the heck it was like, you know, 
I know you guys want these high flyers, but, you know, a little bit of a news flash, stocks aren't supposed to move that way. And if you really take it high and fly it to the moon, we saw what happened with GameStop, where they just, you know, shut the market down and shut everyone's accounts down, which, of course, is highly illegal. And then they tell you uh, you can't trade or you can only sell one share of GameStop at a time. I mean, you know, it's laughable. So if they're making the game, yeah, there are rules to follow, but at the same time, you may want to begin to develop your own rules, right? So this company, if you tell me this company goes into a steady sell-off or remains flat for the next three to four years, it would be 110% justified, right? But again, coming in above estimates consistently on the revenue side. So the company is doing well, but they're just still way too damn hot. And I found this article here going back to September of 22, and the company came out and said, going forward, see clear growth path to a billion dollars in revenue by 2027, supported by core business in U.S. and internationally, reaffirms its previously provided financial guidance for 2022. So the company has never lowered guidance, and they consistently keep coming in above analyst expectations on the revenue side. So I can see why there is a little bit of pump behind it. However, the market cap right now, is four freaking billion. And you're telling me by 2027, you're going to reach one billion. Well, guess what, folks? If this stock doesn't move, 2027 ends, and let's just say they did that billion dollars in revenue, guess what? The stock is fair valued. The stock is fair valued at that point. They need to bring in a 800, 900, a billion dollars a year to justify the current market cap valuation. And, of course, they're bringing in less than half that at $400 million. So, of course, in my opinion, in the short term, the stock should go down. In the long term, the stock should go down. And if we hit 2027 and they're close to bringing in a billion in revenue, like they said, and the market cap is down at like four, four and a half billion, then we can reevaluate re the situation and potentially talk about seeing even greater percentage returns from those new potential lows. Because I'm telling you, regardless of what's going on, you you know, you know, have to stay away from situations like this, in my opinion. Now, again, you may miss a little bit of a rally. Maybe it does go from 130 to 150, 160 before it goes down. But again, here at this level, it, it really technically is a gamble. There is, there is nothing here that I'm looking at that should bring the stock up. The stock is already up too much, in my opinion. So we really need to bring it down. Not, not even just 100 maybe even lower than that. I'm talking sub-100, potentially $70, $80 a share. Really bring it back down to earth and make it much, much more attractive in the numbers. Looking at the, uh, you know, there, there are a couple of different sectors here. They're, they're pretty much growing across the board. And, of course, business primarily in the United States. We did look at earnings. They do not pay a dividend. <clears throat> we checked the company out over the years. They don't have a PE because they're losing like $4 a share after, uh, you know, seven years of business, which always throws me for a loop. But price to sales right here, trading a nine times sales. Uh, you know, I, I mean, on one hand, you could say it's lower than it has been throughout history over the years. Um no, really not the indicator I would use. They have no cash flow. They're trading 17 times book value, the highest it's been during their pump of 2020, and the stock has only gotten shittier over the last two or three years. So not not only do, do I agree that it should have halved back down here, 12, 11 times book, but now rising up to 17 I mean, again, I'm glad the company is, is increasing their revenue, but also at the same time, they're bleeding like an animal, right? Now, the enterprise value is actually kind of in line with where the company is currently trading at, the valuation of $4 billion. And as we see here, enterprise value, which is what another company would pay, is about $3.8 billion. So those are kind of in line, which again may throw you for a loop because it's like, all right, so should it go up or should it go down? Uh you know, again, in, in my opinion, they, they always overvalue these companies in these sectors. And like I said, I pointed out on the chart, if the pandemic never happened, the company probably would have been in a slow, steady decline over all of those years. But if we switch over here and look at the return on assets, you can see 
bouncing around here in the 20s as low as minus 40 plus percent. Then they somehow got it to sub minus 11 percent. And then it doubled. Now, again, this is interesting. Look, 2020 was less than minus 11 percent. Revenue consistently increases, but now the return on assets doubles those losses and drops back to almost minus 21 percent, then minus 25 and a half percent the year after. And then now it has it's climbed a 0.9 percent. It, it just it just it's just not lining up for me. The return on equity, again, was as, as low as minus almost 100 percent, climbed all the way back up to minus 18 percent and has since been sliding now back down to almost minus 45 percent. The return on invested capital, again, really bouncing around, was up to minus 58%, excuse me, was as low as minus 58%, got up to minus 12.5%, and then has basically since pulled back to about minus 30%. The gross margin percentage was higher at times, obviously, basically about a 70, you can call it about a 70 median average over the course of all these years, right now currently sitting a touch below 68, not the biggest red flag, but of course you never want to see numbers go down. The operating margin was all the way up to minus 16.5% and then doubled the year after pandemic, slightly rebounded, and then immediately dropped over 50% from where it was here and is now sitting at minus 35.5%. So the company somehow, some way, has to figure out how to stop the bleeding here. The EBITDA, once again, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. As we see, primarily negative, was up to minus 11.5% at the height, and then somehow they ran into they ran into a roadblock post 2020 that we're seeing like no other company ran into right this is what i'm saying every company ran into the roadblock in 2020 and then began to dig themselves out of it into 21 and 22 and here we're seeing kind of the opposite happen where the company was better in 2020 and is now kind of just kind of just slipping and, and just falling through the cracks here. Again, EBITDA, minus 11.5%, we'll call it. Now it's sitting at minus 31%. The net margins we looked at before, they were climbing, again, up to minus 16.5%, and then basically doubled and are down more than that now, sitting at minus 35 plus percent. The inventory turnover, this is interesting as well, right? It's like as revenue was growing well over these years, look at the inventory turnover here. In the high teens, pulls back to 15, but then to 14, but then to 10, now at 9.3. So you're turning over less inventory now after all of these years. You're, you're turning over less inventory than you were six, seven years ago. And that's what I mean. Something like that kind of throws me for a loop. And again, I believe this is to 2018 and 2019, 2018, 2019. So their best inventory turnover were the years before pandemic and then has since gotten worse. Even though you would think, again, healthcare, healthcare technology, right? You would think it would, it, you would think these numbers would be reversed. So th that's why this is kind of throwing me for a loop. I do like the asset turnover, though, growing over the last several years, as we see here, going from 0.65 back up to above 1. So that's the first time it got back above 1 since 2019. So that is a, that is a good sign for me. However, I'm feeling that a lot of these other metrics are really negative for some reason. The revenue, again, we're seeing phenomenal growth here. Cost of goods not getting too out of hand, yielding good gross profit off of that again. Revenue minus cost of goods, gross profit. But look at the operating expenses, just absolutely exploding. So operating expenses up over 100% from where they were back in 2018. And even at the height of this crap here, it's up about 50% more than what it cost in 2020. And apparently continues to increase here, sitting currently at minus 400 million. So again, that is what is eating away at the company value. And as we see here, operating income sitting at basically about minus 100 million. So if they can somehow get these operating expenses in check, then we can really be off to the races. However, looking at the forecast, we didn't even, I don't even think that's possible because they're expecting it to happen by 26 or 27. 
which again basically means that with the company currently trading in almost 10 times revenue and the bleeding still continuing in the next three to four years before we begin to potentially see any real narrowing of our losses, the, the company's fair value. Uh, excuse me, the company's overvalued. The, the company should seriously pull back here, in my opinion. I'm, I'm going to keep saying that. I do like that assets are outweighing liabilities by about two to one. I do like that. Company holding a little bit of debt. Book value, 794 Stock price, $131. Right? This is what I mean. You can't justify these overinflated market caps and stock prices if you don't own the stock. Because, again, we've looked at so many other companies. You know, I mean, think about it. Think about all the companies. We j I just did a video on Ecolab. There, that was what? Three, th three and a half times yearly revenue. And that's a company that's like net income positive. They've been around for decades. They've been slowly growing over the years. They pay you a dividend to own it, right? They're, they're only trading three and a half times yearly revenue. Think about it. Think about it. It only makes sense if you own it. And that's what you should stop doing. <clears throat> in my opinion, that's what you guys should stop doing. I understand. Listen, I understand the sector it's in, um, how it's popping and dropping. It can be an excellent day trade, short-term trade, whether you're buying or selling. Uh, could be an excellent options play. I get all of that, and I hope all of you make millions of dollars. You have no idea how much I wish this for everybody. I hope everyone becomes a millionaire. In reality, you can't because everyone watching the video, half of you are betting for it, half of you are betting against it. So someone's going to end up being upset, right? So at the end of the day, not all of us can become multimillionaires instantaneously. And the one thing I will say is, listen, if there's a situation like this, you know, you got in much lower, they ran it up during pandemic, you made like a crazy amount, now you're kind of like waiting to pick your spot to get in. Listen, I'm, I'm glad you made money. I, I really am. But this is what I talk about when I say you have to step back and evaluate these numbers here. Because you, you can't listen to the analysts, right? We went over this on the Twilio video. You, you can't listen to the analysts because if we come up here, there you go, 155. Look, 135 to 130, right? So again, the company just came out with earnings right here. Massive, massive losses. And a slight beat on the revenue side coming in uh, 111 million. So again, by bringing it up to 135 or even 151, like Needham saying, you, you are now overvaluating the company even further than it's currently overvalued. You, you need it to come back down to earth. And I can appreciate the fact that it was sub 100 here right at right as the ball drop and then for some reason has been in this raging upward channel even though of course the company came out and said yeah we're still bleeding like a son of a bitch but hey we came in two million above estimates right just remember if if you justify this multiple of trading by this revenue then you should immediately go and buy goodyear tire because don't worry about the volatility recent volatility rubber prices right don't don't worry about any of that because what you're telling me is companies should be trading 10, 12, 15 times yearly revenue. And if that is the case, then Goodyear Tire is going to go from 15, where it currently is, to, uh, I don't even know, $150, right? So if you're really going to buy into that valuation and act like this is going to keep going to the moon, then again, like I said, go look at companies like Goodyear Tire, because apparently... According to you, you have the potential to make 900, 1,000% returns here on the stock. But again, analysts, like I said, they, they come out with light revenue. Again, they beat, but in my eyes, it's light. And, you know, look at this. Price target, 170, keeps buy rating. 154 from 137, keeps buy rating. How? how? Where? It really throws me for a loop sometimes. But... I wanted to back this out here. I wanted to draw this chart again. This is my bottom trend line here, and the stock is right here for you guys. Uh, but this is my bottom long-term trend line, and again, I drew from the tops, of course, heights of the pandemic, almost 300, and now brought it down. And this trend line was basically following the top, and then, of course, it broke up and then broke down below it, uh, pre and post 
stimulus gains and losses. However, again, this this is what I was talking about here in 2018, where they kind of like they brought it up initially and then they kind of like leveled it out and we're kind of just going to slowly sell it off and keep it in this channel minus this. So I drew a trend line over there across that. And you can see that, of course, you have multiple bounces off of this trend line. So this trend line right here looks like at about 90, 91. This is more key than you may want to, uh, you know, accept. But uh, it, it is it is a very key level here. And on the one-year chart, what we can see is, again, this is our top trend line from uh, pandemic highs. This is the upward channel that we've been in for some strange reason since the ball dropped uh, this year. And, of course, we have an apex happening here. That, that We have a triangle meeting right here after earnings here at this apex. And in my opinion, technically, according to the numbers, they should bring this down. Again, I, I understand the hype. I know a lot of young people may be excited about the stock and, and it may explode over the years. But right now, it should go down. Now, again, you know, 50% drop back down to 60, 65. That might be a little extreme. That might be a little extreme. But if you tell me like two months from now, yeah, it's going to break this fib and it's going to be sitting at like $102. It's like, yeah, yeah, that makes 110% sense. That's what that makes right there. And more importantly, that big support line here that I drew across, as you can see, we're meeting up here with another potential apex. And this looks like at the end of this year here, about December, November, December of 23. So, so in my opinion, it should go down. That doesn't mean it will, but technically it should go down uh, in my eyes, according to the charts and the numbers. But again, they're just coming off this earnings play, so I feel like it should break and it should begin to pull down. And then, of course, you're going to get the bounce and they're going to run it back up going into earnings like they always do. And that's why I put that little circle there, because look at the estimates of $120.5 million. Now, if we go back the last couple of quarters, that will be not only the highest estimate, but the highest reported revenue of the company. And it would be you know, like, uh, what, like 8 to 10 <clears> percent, <throat> excuse me, it would be like 8 to 10 percent higher than their previous high reported revenue, right? So it'd be north of 120 million. So that's what I'm saying. If this company somehow cannot bleed as much here in August, and of course, come in above analyst expectations on the revenue side, then that's where that apex is, as we see. I lined it up, and that's why I drew another green line, because that could be a catalyst to break it out of this trend here and bring it up to a fib like right here, back up to like 140, right? And if they bring it, if they do bring it down here to 100 or even sub 100, and it does bounce off that level and run up into earnings, again, if you got in at about 100, yeah, that, that's a 40% return there that you're going to make just in a couple of months off a strong quarter. And of course, a rally going into that earnings quarter. So you could have uh, some action taking place there. Again, that's going to be August, the August earnings. But if for some reason, let's just say they're in line and again, they're bleeding again, um, chances are it should technically come down. This is why I drew this red, this red arrow and uh, continue to stay above this trend line but really shouldn't break out, in my opinion. That will then bring us to another apex again, as I said, uh, about November, December, right? So if this is August 2nd, so the next quarter is going to be like November 2nd, which is like over here, actually. So, you know, could be viewed as a little before apex, but we can also move that over, right? So now, boom, you're, you're kind of hitting the apex there, November 2nd, on those earnings. And technically, this is kind of like a descending triangle, which is why I'm, I'm making... All of these, uh, all of these patterns and and apexes. This is why I drew all these lines for you guys, just to show you the potential patterns lining up. Again, you have triangles inside of channels. This is a descending triangle, technically, coming off. I mean, it's not exactly flat. So, so you know, your your eyes may want to say it's a descending wedge, but it's really not a descending wedge. It's a descending triangle. And it, it does have the potential to break here at this point and, again, come back down to these lows. And I know it seems extreme, but it is 110% justified because we looked at so many other companies that are not trading 9 to 10 times yearly revenue. So, again, unfortunately, I, again, I know I'm beating a dead horse and I keep saying this and I, and I hate to upset anyone watching the video, 
But I'm always going to call it like I see it. I'm not just going to say what you guys want to hear. And then if you're heavy in the stock here and you're saying, oh, it's going to 150, 160, look at the analysts, it, it's not supposed to be there. So I do wish for you it goes there so that you make a couple of bucks, right? Congratu congratulations. However, coming back to reality, it is not supposed to be anywhere near this level. And even if revenue does consistently increase 120, 130, 150 million here at this point, it doesn't matter because in my opinion, I think uh, the, the pattern is lining up here. And I think because it's like a newer, younger tech stock that a lot of you guys may be playing, that is in my eyes, like more, more than enough reason to actually stay away. Because again, I always point out when stocks are overvalued because again, the market dropped down to 33,000 on the Dow and has since slowly been trying to fight to climb back up here. So even though we're not at all time highs, we're technically still near highs. And the reason why I evaluate companies like this is because, again, I know you might like this idea. It's a t health tech stock, NASDAQ. It pops, it drops. You, you made a ton of money. Congratulations. But the reason why I look at companies like this and I am trying to not really warn you, but just like prepare you for potential risk and volatility coming is because this company, as I just showed, in my opinion, could easily drop 30 to 50 percent from where it's currently trading. And with the markets here near highs, if all of a sudden the shit hits the fan, big banks start failing, right? There's some bullshit on someone's balance sheet. This person was cooking the books or, you know, who knows? You know, you're, they're going to come out all of a sudden. The CFO here at iRhythm is going to be embezzling some bull, some funds or some bullshit. It's always some bullshit. You notice that. If you really notice that, it's always it's always that calm before the storm, right? This company technically should be in the shitter, but they're bringing it up. Everything seems okay. It's no problem. That's why I'm saying, in my opinion, they're probably going to crash the son of a bitch down, right? You see, it's hard to really predict these things because I, I try to tell people this all the time and, and they, you know, your mind just can't accept it because you've thought one way, the same way every day for whatever it is, the, you know, 18 years or, the, you know, 29 years or 48 years, however old you are. You have to think like them. You can't think like you. They don't give a shit about you, right? I just laid out, right? I was in the finance industry. We just looked at the charts. We just looked at the numbers. I'm sure at least 70, 80% of you watching the video will agree with me that the company should go down before it goes up, right? But again, they come out with weak earnings. And what do you see? Oh, yeah, yeah, 155. It's still a buy. Yeah, yeah, 135. Yeah, 151 from 131. Yeah, it's a buy. Yeah, yeah, buy it, buy it. It's a buy, it's a buy. Why would you tell me to buy it? Right? Guaranteed, if you set, if, if, if I had that person sitting in front of me right now, that analyst, <clears throat> excuse me, and I laid it out just like I just did, guaranteed, they would not go all in with their assets. I can guarantee it. So why would you? Don't look at what they tell you. Invest based off what the company shows you. And again, the company showed me great growth year over year. Phenomenal growth in revenue. I'm loving it. The only problem is, again, it's way too freaking high and I wouldn't buy it at 131. And if it does break out to 150, 157, whatever these bullshit price targets are, it shouldn't be there in my opinion anyway. And if you don't fully believe in a company and you're not confident about your position, whether you're buying or betting against, then, then don't do it then don't do it. Because again, looking at all these analysts, all of these price targets are higher than the current market price. So if you didn't know anything, you would step in and buy it. But knowing what I know, I would not touch this at all. And if they do bring it up to 160, I'll know that I can probably bet against it and it's probably a layup, slam dunk, grand slam, whatever whatever sport and out metaphor you want to use, and it's going to work out in my favor. You know? But again, 2027, apparently a billion in revenue. I, I don't know. This thing is way too high here. We got the MACD curling here on the daily real quick on stock charts. It's been bouncing off of these moving averages. But 
recently broke down and since pulled back up again May 5th off these I don't know the, these lackluster earnings here <clears throat> with this bleeding taking place and that's why I feel you know maybe the mid Bollinger Band here 13212 and then they may potentially reject it back down to the 120s RSI sitting at 52 doesn't really tell us much and of course a stock like this that's overvalued was overbought on multiple occasions, of course. And then what happens? The MACD crosses and everyone gets caught holding the bag and something you owned at 140 is now at 120. Right? It's amazing how it happens. Switch over here to the weekly. We have some tightening. We have our 50 and 200 day diverging on each other. MACD has been rising. But again, in my opinion, uh, I really think, again, they bounced it up going into earnings here. And then, like, as earnings were coming out, they brought it down. They're trying to bounce it off, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to break. I'm telling you, in my opinion, it's going to break. If you own it here, I, I hope I'm wrong. If you're just watching for entertainment purposes to hear what I have to say about the company, in my opinion, do not take a position currently. That's the way – that's the advice I would give. I would not currently take a position in this stock because it should go lower, but chances are they might take it higher, so you're going to get burned – and then, of course, it should go lower. So if you if you buy it and go long, then it's probably going to go lower and you're going to get screwed. You, you know what I'm saying? It can kind of go either way. So that's why. Better off, in my opinion, don't even touch it. Just on to the next one. And I'm going to end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Just like everyone on YouTube says, like the video, thumbs up, helps out the algorithm, helps me get a few more eyes on the channel. Uh... Like I always say, though, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. So I want to wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you guys in the next video.